Hey everybody, Movie Reviewer Next Door here, and I'm back with another review. And this time, tonight, I saw Sleepless in Seattle. It's a 1993 romantic comedy directed by Nora Ephron, and it stars Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, Bill Pullman, Ross Malinger, and Rosie O'Donnell. In this film, a young boy who tries to set his dad up on a date after the death of his mother. Oh, that's a, not a sentence. He calls into a radio station to talk about his dad's loneliness, which soon leads to dad leads the dad into meeting a journalist, Annie, who flies to Seattle to write a story about the boy and his dad. Oh, that's a comma. My eyes are screwed. I'm getting an appointment soon. Don't worry. Yet Annie ends up with more than just a story in this popular romantic comedy. So, what did I think of Sleepless in Seattle? Well, I have seen this film uh, every year. I can't do that. It messes up my lighting. I have seen this film every year on New Year's Eve. Um... From when I was about 10 or 11 till now, I've seen this film a ton of times, is what I'm saying. And it never gets less interesting or funny or enjoyable. So yeah, this is an easy high recommend for me. But let me get to the cast. Tom Hanks plays Sam Baldwin. He is a man who lost his wife a year and a half ago. Him and his son are getting by, but they're still feeling like they're missing something. This is before Tom Hanks... This seems to be at a time before Tom Hanks lost the soul in his eyes and every single performance um, became just monotonous because, I don't know, soul to soul to the devil, something like that. I don't know if he's on Epstein's records. There was a joke about it, but I don't know if he is. If he is, I'd understand. Um, side note, Captain Phillips, he wasn't that good. He was, he was very wooden and annoying in Captain Phillips, but, uh, at least to me. But here, he is really, 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 really great, and he gets down the emotions of this character well, he gets down the sadness, the happiness, the... The love struck look. He's very good at playing this type of character, at least back then. And yeah, I think it was really good casting for this film. Meg Ryan plays Annie Reed. She is my favorite part of the movie. Um and her acting does outshine Tom Hanks a lot. I don't think Tom Hanks is a bad actor, I just think he's a bit overrated. Um just because you're paid a ton in Hollywood doesn't mean you're a great actor. But I do think Tom Hanks could be captivating in certain types of roles like this, even though he is a bit of a one-trick pony, if you kind of look at it that way. But Meg Ryan, she's this woman who hears him on the radio. His his son calls to a radio show, basically make, gets him to talk about the fact that he doesn't have a wife anymore. And she kind of connects with him, and then she makes it her goal to kind of try to meet up with this guy on the Empire State Building on Valentine's Day. And Meg Ryan, uh, God bless her soul, this was back before she got the insanely shitty plastic surgery, and ever since she got that, it's made it harder and harder to watch her later films. I might have seen, like, one of them, but she was so unrecognizable. I loved her back at this time when she was just adorable. And she is. In in this film, she's just fucking adorable. She feels like a real person. She has real reactions to things that feel realistic. And she's a fun character to follow. Um, again, like anybody out there that's contemplating getting plastic surgery because you feel like you're aging or whatever, don't get it. Don't ever. It's mostly a losing proposition. Just take better care of your skin. And also, don't worry about your appearance so much. It's 
what's on the inside that counts. Um, Bill Pullman plays Walter. He is the man that Annie is engaged to. He does play this character very over the top. Like, he's allergic to bees and strawberries and a bunch of shit. And he has, like, a... He has, like, a... What's it called? Whatever. The thing that's putting out mist next to his bed. It's meant to be comedic. And it is. It's funny. It's funny the amount of things wrong with this character. Um, And Bill Pullman is very good at playing these types of characters, too. Uh, Ross Mallinger plays Jonah Baldwin. He is Sam's son. I haven't seen him in a ton of films. He was never a huge child actor. I know that he was in Kindergarten Cop. He was in Sudden Death with Jean-Claude Van Damme. He is his kid. He was in Little Bigfoot. He was basically the main character in Little Bigfoot. Um, but I I think he does a great job in this. He's a good young actor. Um, he gets across a lot of emotions very well. And Rosie O'Donnell is Becky. She's basically Annie Reed's girlfriend or good friend, whatever, best friend. This was back when Rosie O'Donnell wasn't a an annoying stuck up bitch when she could actually be fun in a movie, could actually make jokes without having to stoop to what a lot of female comedians do nowadays, which is just talking about the vagina. Uh, I like Kathy, what's her name? Kathy Griffin. Yeah, Kathy Griffin, Amy, whatever her name is. Whatever. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But Rosie O'Donnell is very funny in this. She is kind of a comic relief character, but then again, pretty much every character in this film is a comic relief character. But this film, um, it is a very easy, breezy watch. It's not something that's going to be, like, stressful. It's, but it is somewhat original in its approach to the story, where it's, like, two star-crossed lovers or from different parts of the world or different parts of the U.S. in this case, and going through hell or high water in order to be... Excuse me. Even if it does feel a bit like a certain character forces the two together. But the way that it does it feels genuine. This doesn't feel like your normal big-budget rom-com. Something about this film feels very real or more down to earth because you get a lot of rom coms nowadays. Like, I haven't seen it, but No Hard Feelings is the late one of the latest types of this thing where you have Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence from Hunger Games, Winter's Bone all these other things, American Hustle. And, I don't know, there's something about it that comes off creepy, where she's, like, trying to, like, she's hired by parents of a 19-year-old who acts like a child to seduce him so that he has a girlfriend. So, basically, whoring her out. And... I don't know, just something feels off, feels gross about it. Nothing in this film felt gross, even though there's literally a point where uh, Annie, like, fakes, or, like, calls a detective agency to take pictures of this guy to see what he looks like um, after she gets his information because she wants to know who to look for. And she calls around in order to get his information from the radio show. Even that doesn't feel creepy. It feels more like curiosity. It doesn't feel like there's malice or malicious intent for some reason. And I think it's all down to how these characters are written. 
Now, I do have to look up who the writer is. Written by Nora Ephron and a couple other people. Nora Ephron, if you don't recognize that name, she's a novelist by mostly, but she has directed some films. She directed um, Mixed Nuts with Steve Martin, uh, The Bewitched Movie, uh, Michael with John Travolta about the angel, I think. I think that's the one about the angel. Yeah. The angel that smells like cookies. I remember that. Julie and Julia and You've Got Mail. She's definitely an accomplished comedy or drama or rom romantic drama director. And I think that she does a great job with the script. Now... This film, uh, one of the big things that I can say about this film is that it subverts your expectations on how certain characters are written. Because there's a bit where a character tells another character that they want to go after this other person because they feel like it's fate. And the other character realizes that this other character hasn't been acting like themselves lately. And they want them to pursue what's best for them. The way this would have been done in a movie nowadays would have been lazily, where they said, Oh, I'm breaking up with you. You're the worst. How dare you? And it's not that this character's cheated on him. She hasn't. But a movie nowadays would treat it as if she is cheated. Or that he is being irrational because he's angry at her and all that. And instead, he acts like a normal human. He's like, oh, okay. And it makes the film a lot more delightful to watch. And at no point did I feel that this film got too dramatic or too depressing. Because at no point does this film wallow in its misery in the same way that the whale does. Where the whale is misery upon misery upon misery which is Darren Aronofsky's thing he lo he wants to make the cra the film crowd miserable and a lot of his little cronies or his followers think that is fantastic filmmaking in my opinion it is not in my opinion it's very lazy to just be like oh isn't this character gross and then chastising your audience when it's literally the thing that you've been saying, oh, this character is gross throughout the movie, and then, oh, you're such a terrible person for thinking this character is gross, when you, literally, the entire movie you're trying to say he's gross. In this film, you don't have that. I'm glad for that, because I hate movies like that. I hate movies where there's no point to it other than to depress the audience, and it mostly comes off comedic because of how, like, depressing they keep wanting to go and then it gets to a point where it's like there has to be some let up there has to be some point to this other than just making the audience depressed which i think is just really lazy writing and a waste of brendan fraser but again in this there were small moments of that in this but they were usually followed by something that either pushed forward the plot or a comedic bit because this film is very heavily comedic. It is not mostly a, a melodramatic romance. It is mostly a comedy. And I think Nora Ephron really excels with the comedy in this film, um, writing-wise and directing-wise. something that the whale really needed because it didn't really have any scenes that felt like they were pushing for the plot. It was mostly watch this character get worse and worse and worse until they die. There are movies that deal with that that have done it well. I could think of one, but I don't want to make this review too long. But... Well, okay. You know what? One movie. Best exotic, Mar Best exotic Marigold Hotel with Judy Dench, Bill Nighy, Maggie Smith. There is a character that dies at the end of that film. At no point did it feel like, oh, 
we're just making the audience more and more and more depressed until this character dies. It's a comedy. And that actually came as a shock to the audience. But after that, you still have moments of comedy. It's not like the movie just comes to a halt and the rest of the movie is just a grieving session. Getting that deep into drama most of the time just doesn't seem to work. And yet, yeah, th both Marigold Hotel and this film know the right amount of drama to throw in for a comedy. I know The Whale wasn't a comedy, but The Whale was just, I hated it. And I like a lot of movies that are pretty fucking sad, Children of Men being one of them, one of my favorites. But yeah, like this film, if you need, need a film to watch on New Year's Eve, this is one that you should really take a look at if you haven't seen it before. Even if you have seen it before, watch it again. It's really funny. It's free of all this political bullshit. At no point does it feel like there's a joke just for the sake of a joke against certain people or anything. And it just, it's all around a feel-good movie, which is what we need more of nowadays and less movies like The Whale. But yeah. Also, killer soundtrack. Look, look up the soundtrack and the score for this film. Both are very good. But yeah. That was my review of Sleepless in Seattle. If you've seen the film, let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any recommendations, put those in the comments as well. And uh, move your next door. Out.